so literally i am about to do genesis chapter 2 with you guys um my previous video showcases us going in depth regarding genesis 1 and understanding the main points that we got out of it and um the layout of how heaven and earth was created and to recap and sum things up if you'd like to go back on the channel um to search up that video or i'll just put a link over the head um feel free to do so but to recap we discovered that god created us to be vegetarians um the holy spirit and the holy trinity was mentioned and then we saw how creative god really is carry on from genesis 1 we're going into genesis 2 and so in verse 1 it says does the heaven and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So, God worked really hard in making sure the structure was um, correct. Um, in making sure that everything he made um, and the details he went into was perfect. It can be quite exhausting. Just like us girls, when we go shopping, even though it felt like we barely did anything, it is exhausting at the end of the day. It's our personal cardio, you know? So I feel like it was well-deserved rest for God because it really did go into so much details, into so much, you know, planning when it comes to creating heaven, um, heaven and earth as well. And so, of course, it's going to want to rest. And that's like us taking the weekend. You know because we've worked hard from monday to friday and we just want to chill on the weekends and that's like for god basically and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which he created and made and when i was reading this verse it reminded me of you know the israelites when they have a sabbath day and it's almost kind of like it's a holy day to spend with god to just chilling to being in god's presence and to just like you know thanking god for everything that is done for you throughout the week and so that's just what it says like to me that's what it's just all about really you know resting on the seventh day there are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created and in that day the lord made the earth and the heavens and every plant of that field before it was in the earth and every herb of that field before it grew for the lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to tilt the ground so in chapter one in um in genesis one we realized that god had already you know um digged in on um, the soil and planted the seeds in there however in order for seeds to grow in order for trees to grow in order for things to develop it has to rain because that way um we have like you know the frontal sentences happening and we have you know things germinating in the right way so of course for everything to be in line and everything like that god had to make sure that you know he put rain on earth but they went up a maze from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground so god literally like watered the ground so that everything can germinate germinate and grow and yield beautiful fruits so that we can have food to eat because like i mentioned god actually created us to be vegetarians including animals and more of that was discussed in genesis 1 so go and look for that video after you finish reading it watching this basically and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nose through the breath of life and man became a living soul not god being very very like crafty not god being a sculptor you know God literally like molded us from the ground like clays basically and then in order to like you know bring us um, to life it literally breathed into us and I feel like him breathing into the nostril of man was him breathing the Holy Spirit in man so so that that way the Holy Spirit is the one helping and showing Adam how to you know care for certain plants and what to do when it comes to caring for animals when it comes to caring for himself ways to ways to work with god in the perfect way and to just fellowship and just be in god's presence and to just you know make room for god and it made me realize why any the enemy devil satan whatever his name is is always after our soul and that's because if you're aware of the story about how like 
the devil um, fell like lightning onto the onto the earth after he got cast out because he got pride saying that he wanted to be like God and have his own throne above God and be the one to be worshipped by the angels and by people obviously God had to kick him out because how can you try to overthrow your own creator when it made you perfect so the pride got into him and i feel like the only reason why the devil is always after our soul is because the holy spirit and god uses our soul to communicate with him because we are spiritual beings you know and that's why the devil is always after it because he knows his um punishment is going to hell at the end of times anyways and it will try his possible best to take out God's children with him. He will try his possible best. Because we also have dominion over everything on earth. That was what God ordained humans to have. Dominion over everything on earth. And that includes the devil. And the devil did not like that. You know. So he knew his punishment. And he knew God loved us so much. Because he took his time to create us in his own image. You know. In the image of him, of God. The Holy Spirit and Jesus. And so the devil. The enemy doesn't like that at all. And that's why we'll do just about everything. To like take us and drag our soul to hell. And so obviously in order to not be rebuked instantly. He tries his best to slither his way into our life using thoughts, using words, um, using people to get to us so that we can backslid away from God and revoke God and also like turn to the world because you know we had dominion over him while we were in the Garden of Eden, you know? That little thing. And it will come down the line when I talk to you about how like you know Eve fell into temptation, if that makes sense him being slippery little sucker basically and the lord god planted a garden east ward in eden and he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the lord god to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of good of the tree of knowledge of good and evil remember in genesis 1 it says light and darkness and now is mentioning good and evil and these are the words that you see throughout the throughout the verses in the bible and it also states how god sees life there's no in between with him is either you're very good or is either you're very bad is either you're light in in um you're light in the world or you're of the darkness it you know exactly where god stands and is always in the light you can't serve to masters and think you can get away with it you know is if you like one more than the other basically so i feel like that's what this comes down to for me personally you know and then and a river went out of eden to water the garden so obviously god was taking care of the garden as well really god created garden of eden for us to luxury in like literally just wanted us to have soft life he had everything in control and he just wanted us to just live our best life and actually manage it like when it comes to reading genesis you have to turn most things that you read in genesis especially genesis 1 to 3 as a prayer point because even though we got kicked out of garden of eden god can still give us our own garden of eden so that we can rest in peace in love in laughter full feel of you know life in us you know making sure that our garden is being um basically watered always growing in the goodness of god always living in abundance i feel like that's what garden of eden is it's just life live love and life is it live love and laugh those three things or whatever that stupid code is but um literally i just feel like god just wanted us to have soft life god just literally wanted us to be luxurious stay at home humans that is taking care of everything taken care of for for us literally like imagine just like being in garden of eden and just being naked running around eating fruits tending the animals playing with animals like cinderella and pocahontas diving into waters living your best life and then we're in sin and we're literally struggling imagine living forever forever young 
like forever worshiping God in awe of God being in his presence constantly there's no violence there's no disasters there's no diseases there's no there's no death you know there's no there's nothing such as suffering because God did not ordain that for us you know and from thence it was parted and became into four heads the name of the first is Pison that is which compasses the old land of Avalon where there is gold see God likes good things he likes luxury he likes gold I like gold you like gold don't you he likes good things and I feel like God wants us to just live our best life and have the best of everything because it put gold in that land for us it put gold there and the gold of that land is good there is bellum and there is ox um, stones and the name of the second river is Gion. the same it is that compasses the old land of Ethiopia and then this shows me shows to me that you know like how people like to argue you know Christianity is a white man's religion how is it a white man's religion when it says in the beginning that a river that was in Garden of Eden running through it went into Ethiopia as well so how is it a white man's religion if in Africa God was already present there if that makes sense I lowkey feel like Garden of Eden is in Africa Eden somewhere because the cherubims and the um the sword thing the light beam sword thing that is spinning around when it comes to Garden of Eden so that it can prevent people from entering the garden is there but I feel like it's Eden in Africa I don't know I have that feeling it's Eden in Africa somewhere hmm. but anyways I do know that God can we do have garden of eden within us and we always have to seek god to give us our own garden of eden that he made in perfectness for us basically and the name of the third river is Idikel. i hope i'm pronouncing that right that is it which goes towards the east of assyria so that is um the yeah assyria um middle east basically and the fourth river is um euphorites and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. So literally being a gardener. Life was so easy. <laughs> when I meet Eve and Adam, I'm going to hug them so tightly and whisper, was that fruit worth it? Did that fruit taste nice? Because fam, I like living the luxurious life and I could have had it easy no period no suffering no diseases no death in and out of god living my best life like literally i've been to a nudist beach and when i tell you being naked and running in the ocean and in the waters and just embracing nature in general is so freeing and the thing that the fact that we might have had that hurts it hurts it really really hurts because the water, the ocean, the beach, being laying on the on on the sand, naked, while the sun is beaming on you, and you're talking to God, and you're eating the freshest of fruits. It just sounds good, and then you're surrounded by lovely golds and lo lovely like minerals and all these great things, and it's like a piece of heaven on earth. And they fought for it that you know but we're going down that line towards it you see and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every fruit and um, of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt thou shalt surely die and I feel like not only did they die spiritually they also died physically in the sense of spiritually as soon as they knew the the, um, the difference between good and evil because you're allowing temptation to come into your heart into your mind and also dying physically in the sense of God wanted us to live forevermore just like angels live forevermore in heaven I'm not sure or anything but I feel like angels live forevermore in heaven and I feel like that's what God wanted us so we humans died spiritually as well as physically and that's what I'm getting from that because like 
yes god was not a dictator in the sense of it gave us free will to do whatever and he wanted us to have that free will in order to choose him because we truly want to choose him it's almost kind of like your partner having their own free will to do whatever but they wake up every morning choosing you choosing to love you choosing to respect you choosing to care for you choosing to cherish you choosing to protect you and i feel like that was what god wanted for us you know and the lord god said it is not good that man should be alone I will make him and help mates for him see us women and I feel like this is a good prayer point to have when it comes to finding a spouse that we pray that God has made sure your husband has everything he needs his garden has been made beautiful ready for him to tend while you're helping him in the sense of he was the one over you know watching the garden making sure everything is good and that includes loving protecting cherishing literally like w watching over you why we just have to do the bare minimum and help when needed because we are a helpmate to our husband the societal standard for women is what the is what was placed on men biblically so the things that um, society expects women to do you know wash the clothes be emotionally mentally physically everything there for the family taking care of the man everything like that is actually something that the man is supposed to do when you truly read the bible you understand that 90 percent if anything 95 percent of what men should do showcases everything that women are doing in today's um age and they're not even allowed to emotionally abuse you mentally abuse you physically abuse you financially abuse you you know they're meant to really really cherish you and love you like christ loved the church there are only three things women are meant to do in a marriage and that is biblically in a marriage what is expected you know and I feel like I wish more people knew their roles in life because there are other things that I said is in the Bible that have been twisted by misogynistic men that use that wrapped idea of what a woman should do to suppress women honestly like I truly wish people get to know God by reading the Bible a lot more a lot more and people like to talk about the proverb 31 woman but the more I read it the more I realize that the proverb 31 woman had everything under control because she had maids her husband was making sure she was taken care of by giving her maids she was just multiplying what needed to be multiplied to su sustain the family this is like a prayer point that i've been making in my life is like god give my future husband all the necessities in needs and all the things you want for him give him his home garden of hidden so that i can be of good help make to him and then he can take care of things he can take care of me protect me watch over me cherish me love me like christ loved the church be a servant to me in the sense of Jesus was a servant to his disciples. He was watching, washing his disciples' feet. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So the little animals that you see, everything in the world, Adam named everything. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not there was not found an helpmate for him. And and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, not God being a surgeon, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. That is God being a surgeon. God was also a surgeon, you know not also a creative an architect you know a producer it was also a surgeon you know and which the lord god had taken from man made a woman and brought her unto the man and adam said this is now the bones of my bones the flesh of my flesh 
she shall be called woman yes this is booming from the future so basically i've already edited this video i've finished it uploaded it on my channel however um i received a new revolution from god today regarding genesis 2 and i just felt like it was just the right thing for me to actually like talk about it th um, through to you guys as well because it could help someone and it has helped me among someone else on my instagram that i shared this um revolution with and so i just pray that you know it also helps you out there if that makes sense so um i was reading you know meditating on genesis 2 21 again and the message was and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his rib and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the lord god had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man so to add god could easily create eve the same way he did with Adam by making Eve from clay and breathing into Eve. Instead, he caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep to take out his rib and flesh to form Eve. The reason for this is to allow Adam to instantly recognize himself in Eve, his helpmate, to fall in love with her, make her appealing so that they can have sex, procreate abundantly, you know, so that that when they're together they're joined as one because they are one if that makes sense although adam and eve allowed sin into the world by listening to the cunning serpent god's original plan for marriage is still in place and it can be seen with isaac Rebe and rebecca ruth and boaz esther and the king god sent isaac's servants to look for rebecca giving him description on what to look out for in the woman when the servants found Rebecca, he instantly recognized that for Isaac. When Ruth was in the field, God favored her by letting Boaz recognize the quality God requires for him by examining her character. Then God removed the king's first wife in order for the search of a new queen to begin, so that they can rule the kingdom together. Unknowingly to Esther, she was a queen to save her people from being destroyed immediately god um, immediately esther found favor in the king's eyes because he instantly recognized esther as his wife and queen with each relationship their union was ordained for a reason isaac and rebecca gave birth to jacob who became israel a nation god had a covenant through isaac's lineage 12 tribes of israel was formed one of the tribes being judah which is the lineage Jesus was born to redeem mankind back to God. The reason why I didn't work out with people from the past wasn't because I'm not a good woman or a good person, and that goes for you. It wasn't because you're not a good man, it wasn't because you're a good woman, you're not a good woman or whatever. It was simply because they weren't the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. They're not the bones of your bones or the flesh of your flesh, as God has ordained for that to happen. They couldn't recognize me as theirs because I wasn't theirs to begin with. Plus, I didn't have a relationship with God. I knew God, heard about him, but didn't have a relationship with him. And there were certain behaviors God wanted to remove from my life while embedding new qualities into me. In the garden, we read that Adam had a relationship with God, still did after leaving the garden. He tended to the gardens, he did his duty accordingly, and God saw it was time for him to have a helpmate. A woman to assist, be fruitful and multiply with. It, and it is the same traits you see in relationships in the Bible. It's not my job as a woman to go looking for the man. And I'm not saying you have to be passively waiting on your husband to finally recognize you is about you waiting on god and working with god to find your purpose in life because that way as you're finding it god is working on you the same way he's working on your future husband and when it's time my god ordained spouse will find and recognize me the same way god is working on me 
and with me is doing it with my husband as well. Even if they're currently with someone else, Ruth and Esther got married to people meant for them to help bring God's glory for the his purpose for humanity. Ruth was a widow. Esther's husband had a wife prior to her. When God says, oh, this is about me, basically, which I'm going to go into. And this goes to show, like, there's a reason why God always tells us not to awaken love before it's time. And I feel like Adam falling into a deep sleep is something that our husbands are currently in, if we've not found them. They're currently carrying out their own purpose, God working on their life, God seeing them work in their purpose and helping them build a good relationship with him. Because that way, he can even knows God, he can carry out his godly role in the marriage without being, you know, tainted or without allowing the world to come in and destroy something that God ordained for a purpose, you know. And so, if you find yourself always consistently choosing people and they're not choosing you or you're, you find yourself in relationships, it's just not working out. Like I said, it's not because you're not a good person. It's not because you don't have an amazing personality, amazing traits or characteristics about you. It just means that person is just not yours. And if God has told you someone is yours, it's not your duty to go and tell the person, hey, God told me I'm your wife. God told me this and this and third. You have to wait on the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit needs to do in his life. And in the perfect timing, God will make that happen. And I feel like that goes for me in general. You know, that goes for anyone in general. That goes for any woman in general, you know. And again, because we're so desperate, we operate out of desperation due to one reason for another. My one had to be with you know seeing people finding love or seeing people dating and i wanted to know what that was for me whereas it wasn't my time to have that love that i, I truly crave and because of desperation even though they didn't last beyond six months with me i put myself through emotional anguish that was not needed when i could have reserved and preserved my energy for something a lot better which is finding my own purpose and developing my own relationship with god but you know what yeah i can't regret my path in life because everything happens for a reason we can't regret our path in life you know so i just think this is the best way we can look at love there are different types of love but humans complicate that love because of one reason or the other, like trauma, like abandonment issues, all of that, you know? So I feel like this is the revolution God showed me. And now I'm going to carry on to what I was discussing with you guys. Bye. <laughs> so I pray, and this is a prayer point for all women. Always ask God to give you the bones of your bones, the flesh of your flesh. You know, so that your Adam can recognize you very, very easily, you know. And this made me realize that God only perspective on marriage is us having one soulmate. Because we were made for one person on earth. Hence the reason why it's always important to act. So the old idea of, you know, dating multiple people, having sex with this person, um, you know, connecting your soul with this person, making yourself known and open spiritually when it comes to having sex and dating multiple people was not what God ordained for us. It was literally not the design of what God had in mind when it comes to marriage. And God is the one that created sex. He wants us to have sex and have it plentiful. Hence the reason why it says go forth, multiply and, you know, fill the earth basically. He really was the one that designed humans to have sex. He wants us to enjoy having sex sex was ordained for us like that's how in in detail god is and it was meant to be in the sanctity of marriage if you're a very spiritual led person 
you will realize that opening yourself up to just about anyone and everyone is not respecting the temple which is your soul that god has that the holy spirit resides in and yes i'm not a virgin yes i've had sex yes i've had partners i've had sex with yes i've shared my soul with people but now that i'm aware i'm privy to this um you know to this aspect of what a marriage should be of what the man's role should be the woman's role should be and the fact that it's not as toxic as people make it out to be the fact that people are not um, you realize that a lot of things has been manipulated by people respect him that is so wrapped and that is so misogynistic that is so harmful and toxic to women and the way society look at women as subordinates as people less than as people you shouldn't respect or care for whose opinion sh it doesn't matter who is meant to be in the kitchen put up and shut up and it's just the fact that god did not ordain women to be like that god did not ordain men to treat women like that i'm um, seeing and we fell from grace to um from grace especially with adam and eve as soon as they fell from grace and everything like that God still hold women in high esteem. And it's the reason why Jesus held women in such high esteem. In the way that he loved us and in the way that he respected our opinion. And in the way that he trusted us to deliver the good news regarding him being the son of man. And it's just, I'm so passionate about this because it's like, if I didn't open my Bible. Yes, I am a feminist outside of being, you know, a Christian. But now I actually have the Bible also to back me up on the, the feelings and the thoughts I have regarding how women should be treated. And I wholeheartedly believe that women are the apple of God's eyes. Like we're literally, we're made to be treated and respected and loved and adorned and cared for and cherished and, you know, catered to like do you know what i'm saying so um yeah that is one thing that i want to mention as well and then the other thing um to carry on to carry on um you know it's also important to say that prayer of god um let the bone of my bone the flesh of my flesh to immediately instantly recognize me as their spouse as their helpmate as someone that is ordained by god for them that is made perfectly for them that is someone that i'm i'm the rib of their side you know someone that when they meet it just makes sense and it un and they understand why it never worked with anyone else and that is like literally like a lot of things in the bible when you read them and god is teaching you and the holy spirit is teaching you um you know about what the scripture means from your perspective from his perspective from a wide um up them perspective then you slowly start turning things into um prayer points that is relating to you when it comes to me and god and my work with god god is showing me what love is and what love should be and how love is you know god is truly showing me how to be a good person and yes i'm a fool but sometimes it doesn't deter me from trying again because I know I have grace that covers me and I know that God is always by my side helping me every step of the way. Please, please, please read the Bible for yourself. Carry on. Um, because she was taken out of man, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. So when it comes to who matters more to the man, the, his mom or his wife, this is what the Bible says. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Because that is who you're meant to start a family with. Be fruitful and multiply with. Yes, we love our parents. Yes, we love our moms. If your mom is boy, you're meant to leave your mom and cleave unto your wife. Theories regarding... Who do you pick first, your mom or your wife? Who should sit first in the in front of the car when you're going out, your mom or your wife? You cleave onto your wife, not your mom. Because as soon as you're joined with your wife, she is your family now. 
She is your responsibility now. She is who you're meant to care for right then and then. Your mom becomes secondary to you. And that includes daddy girls as well. You cleave on to your husband. You respect one another. And literally the Bible backs it up. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mom, mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. You know? And then they, they were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed. You know? And I feel like this really, really opens my eyes when it comes to the design of human life. The design God had for us. You know, and it also shows the characteristics of God, which is the creative as evident in Genesis 1 to 2, creating heaven and earth, resting, then creating man and woman. God is all powerful, wielding things and life into existence shows God's power. Just his words brought life into existence, and when he breathed life into Adam. It gave us that same power. So whatever you do and say, it's you creating that power to bring into life what you, you said with your words. So that's why God and Jesus urges us to be careful of what we say, of what we listen to, of our thoughts, our mind, what we see. Because those things that we open and expose ourselves to affects us on the inside. If all you're seeing, all if all you're seeing are violence, and if all the lyrics, lyrical content you're listening to are, you know, about cheating, about promiscuity, is about you know lying and all things, you become that because that's what you're exposing yourself to. You become influenced by what is around you, by what society dictates as okay. So if you want a good life or you're trying or striving to be a better person, it's good to have things surrounding you that are, um, that, that, you know, looks like what you try to achieve in your future, I feel. Also, God is a gentleman. It gives us free will. He's a gentleman in the sense of the way he caters for us in such leniency in such joy and happiness in such regards to us it keeps us as i regard even when we fell from sin he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of calvary and he died and then he went to hell to defeat the death did um to defeat death raise up again and ascended into heaven on the and sit on the right hand side of god because God puts us in such high regards, in such high regards, you know, and God, and that brings me to God's love being unconditional, no matter what we do, he still loves people that curses his name, he still loves people that speak on his name, that are atheists, he still loves them, and this is why, what's his name, the one that got swallowed by um, a shark, by a whale for three days, the reason why he got swallowed was because he was running away from telling the good news to his enemies and he didn't like that because he knew God's heart. He knew God's heart. God was trying to redeem them and he hated that because they oppressed him and his, you know, and his country and his people. So his love is so unconditional. God is merciful even when he kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. He did not desert them. He still spoke with them. Also, God was merciful to... Okay, this is towards um, chapter 3. So, I'm going to leave that. But I will say, you see God's mercifulness in chapter 3. You know? So, um, stay tuned for more. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have more things you'd like to expand on, um, feel free to comment down below. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.